In ancient traditions, hidden knowledge was a common theme often cloaked in mystery and guarded carefully because of the threat of persecution. This wisdom was often encoded in stories, parables, and sacred writings. Many of these texts are still around today, but their deeper meanings remain concealed, accessible only to those who can look beyond the surface and interpret the subtle hints they contain. Even the Bible, a widely studied text, holds intriguing clues for those prepared to explore. Beyond a lie, Terrell understanding one such clue is the phrase Christ is in you, suggesting a profound spiritual truth. The temple of God is not a place you visit, but something found within each of us. Today we are going to dive into an ancient secret shared by various spiritual traditions around the world. We'll be examining a technique for awakening the pineal gland, often referred to as activating Christ consciousness, in a more in-depth manner than we have in previous discussions. This process is known as activating the oil of Christ or Christ consciousness in the brain, deep Y. Thin, our skull lies an area called the claustrum located at the center of the head from this claustrum. A special secretion is produced, used known as spinal brain fluid, which is a type of oil. This fluid has its origins in the cerebrum and was referred to in ancient times as Christos, a term meaning anointed one. This fluid embarks on a journey moving from the brain down through the spinal cord. Its path is quite remarkable. It descends gradually until it reaches the sacral plexus, which is near the sacrum, the second lowest segment of the spinal column. The movement of this fluid down the spinal cord to the sacral underscores the incredible design of the human body. The spinal cord itself can be seen as an extension of the brain, a miniature reflection of how consciousness descends from a higher spiritual realm into the physical body and material world. This descent mirrors the legend of Santa Claus, who travels down the chimney to deliver gifts representing the gifts of consciousness or the awakening of Christ consciousness. Each month when the moon aligns with the position it held at the time of your birth, T is believed that a kind of spiritual seed or germ is formed and planted in the solar plexus located just above the sacral plexus. This seed is thought to be a universal creative force, the foundational essence from which all things are born and within which everything exists. The oil having reached the sacral plexus awaits the germination of this seed, an event that happens once a month, twelve times a year. This cycle spans about two and one-half days each month, specifically when the moon is in the zodiac sign, where the sun was positioned at the time of your birth. This germ or seed represents the symbolic birth of Christ with the solar plexus being referred to as Bethlehem, the birthplace of Christ. The journey doesn't end here. The oil must return to its original source in the midbrain. As it ascends back through the spinal cord, the vibration of the oil increases, becoming more refined and amplified. Initially, this sacred oil undergo differentiation in the pineal and pituitary glands, the C glands representing the masculine and feminine energies, within us play a crucial role in this spiritual process, nurturing what could be seen as a spiritual offspring that takes shape in the solar plexus of each person. The descent of this oil through the spinal cord follows the pathways of two nerves, known in various spiritual traditions as Ida and Pingala in the chakra system of ancient Indian teachings. Pingala is associated with the pineal gland and carries a positive electric charge, often symbolized by honey. Conversely, the Ida nerve is connected to the pituitary gland and is associated with a magnetic charge symbolized by milk. These two energies balance each other, creating a dynamic interplay that is vital for spiritual awakening and the realization of one's inner Christ consciousness. The symbolism here is rich with layers of meaning. The gam representing the Christ is said to be born in Bethlehem, an allegorical reference to the merging of the dual energies, the masculine represented by Joseph and the feminine by Mary. The descent of the sacred oil from the brain is often referred to as the mana. From heaven in this metaphorical framework, 
Heaven symbolizes the higher realms of consciousness located in the upper regions of the body, such as the head or dome, while the torso, seen as a connection between heaven and earth, is often equated with the heavens. The heart situated in the middle of the body has been called many names in different traditions such as Midgard or the Middle Garden, signifying a place of balance and connection between the physical and the spiritual. In contrast, the lower regions, including the generative area, are often depicted as Sodom and De Gamora representing base desires and material. Attachments this area associated with primal urges and animalistic cravings has also been termed hell or the world of the flesh. On the other hand, regions above the heart are portrayed as the Garden of Eden, a land flowing with milk and honey symbolizing a paradisiacal state of higher awareness and spiritual purity. The pineal gland produces a golden, honey-like fluid that contains dial-tryptamine DMT, a compound believed to facilitate spiritual visions and deeper states of consciousness. Meanwhile, the pituitary gland secretes a substance that resembles milk. This is why ancient texts often describe the land of spiritual awakening as flowing with milk and honey. The journey of this sacred fluid is a continuous cycle descending to the sacral plexus and awaiting the monthly germination of the seed. If one transmute this seed, raising it up through the spinal column, it reaches critical regions like the medulla, oblongata pons, and mesencephalon. During this ascent, the seed crosses the vagus nerve, also known as the pneumogastric nerve. This nerve travels from the bri end stem extending to several vital organs including the lungs and stomach forming a network known as the tree of life. The, the ancient sages understood that the seed born in Bethlehem each month symbolizes the potential for Christ consciousness to awaken within us by avoiding activities and habits that deplete or damage this vital oil such as excessive sexual activity, poor diet stress, and negative emotions one can conserve this precious essence. This conservation allows the oil to rise through the body's energy centers or chakras, beginning with the he, RT, and moving up to the throat through dedicated practices, such as meditation, controlled breathing, mindful eating, and maintaining a calm and peaceful mind. One can elevate this spiritual oil as it ascends its vibrational frequency continues to rise. Eventually, it crosses the vagus nerve near the upper spine, traveling through the 33 vertebrae of the spinal column, a journey that mirrors the symbolic crucifixion of Christ who is said to have died at the age of 33. When this sacred oil reaches the upper spinal region, it encounters the optic thalamus, an egg-shaped S, structure located at the brain center. The crossing of the vagus nerve here is often likened to the crucifixion, a symbolic death of the physical ego-based consciousness. This, this is where the transition from a material to a spiritual existence takes place, embodying a state of God consciousness. This process activates the kundalini energy leading to the regeneration of both body and mind, rather than being destroyed. The oil undergo a significant transformation. Its potency is amplified, sometimes up to a thousandfold for two and one two days a period equivalent. To a luna phase, the oil rests in the optic thalamus, appearing dormant or dead. This phase is often compared to the death of Christ, a period of stillness or latency within what could be considered the tomb of the cerebellum. But on the third day, just as the story of the resurrection suggests, the oil rises once more this time to the pineal gland. As it reaches the pineal gland, it connects with the cerebellum and the optic thalamus illuminating both the third eye and what is often described as the throne of God. This activation leads to the awakening of crystals within the pineal gland, a process that ignites higher levels of awareness, unlocking what is often referred to as the Christ consciousness or divine consciousness. This heightened state represents a profound transformation where an individual can, can perceive and embody a higher spiritual truth, transcending the ordinary physical limitations of existence. 
This sacred area, often referred to as the Temple of the Living God, represents the highest point within our physical form. It is where the breath of life, the divine spark, is infused into every human being. This substance known as the Holy Spirit in its most elevated form finds its ultimate expression in the pineal gland, which is considered the pinnacle or the crown of this inner temple. The ancients particularly, the Egyptians and Greeks revered the optic thalamus as the light of the world because of their profound understanding of human physiology and anatomy. They knew that the sacred oil which originates in the claustrum of the brain and undergo differentiation in the pineal and pituitary glands descends through the spinal cord, but ultimately begin. As a journey of ascension, this upward movement symbolizes the elevation of consciousness. Enlightened individuals were seen as those who could facilitate this ascent, helping the oil reach the optic thalamus, thus illuminating it. Christ in this ancient wisdom represents the inner resurrection and renewal available to every person. This transformation occurs when the sacred oil is refined and elevated, converting into a powerful force capable of regenerating the body and transcending the limitations of physical death. Internally, this process awakens countless door, man brain cells igniting a new level of Consciousness and vitality, however, certain actions can harm this sacred oil and diminish its potency. Overindulgence in alcohol gluttony and engaging in inappropriate sexual activities are just a few behaviors that can deplete this vital essence, much like the biblical allegory of eating from the tree of life and losing one's vital connection to it. The ancients viewed the tree of life as a symbol of vitality and longevity and they understood that squandering this sacred substance leads to the body. S decline and the loss of its vital life force the true. Secret lies in understanding how to preserve and elevate this oil, fostering an environment within oneself that supports spiritual enlightenment and higher states of consciousness. The principle of as above. Sobelow suggests that maintaining the balance and sanctity of this internal process can lead to profound spiritual and physical well-being. This ancient wisdom held that by nurturing in this seed and guiding it upward, one could significantly extend their lifespan with some sages of old said to have lived for several centuries due to their mastery of this sacred knowledge and in-depth exploration of the Gospels reveals this foundational truth embedded within their texts, phrases like, I am the light of the world, point directly to this internal illumination where the optic thalamus, the true light of the world, shines bright when one achieves inner clarity, as Matthew 6, 22, states, If thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light, referring to the third eye or spiritual eye. This teaching emphasizes the importance of focusing one's inner vis, I honor keeping your eye simple to fill one's entire being, with divine light. Yet there are those who misunderstand, understand these teachings. Many view Jesus Christ purely as a historical figure who will physically return to save humanity. This external expectation overlooks the core message that salvation and enlightenment come from within this misunderstanding is what the Apostle Paul referred to when he spoke of the sacred secret of Christ within the Christ that dwells in each of us. The kingdom of God is an inner reality, not an external one, and it do as not manifest in ways that can be seen with physical eyes Jesus's Teachings make it clear that the kingdom of God is not something to be found outside ourselves. He said not to look outward for it, for the kingdom of God does not come in such a way as to be seen with your eyes. It is not a matter of look here or look there for the kingdom of God. It is within us all the journey to discover this kingdom is entirely internal requiring us to turn inward and recognize that everything we seek, the universe itself, the divine presence, is already within us. This path is not on e of external search, but of deep inner exploration to achieve true spiritual transformation. One must elevate this sacred energy and guide the vital oil through all the chakras, esp especially addressing the lower ones, which are associated with aspects like sexuality, 
envy, power greed, and material wealth. If we remain fixated on these lower centers, we are essentially consuming the fruit of the tree of life in a way that keeps us bound to earthly desires and limitations. This is why it is essential to raise this energy and transcend the lower mind, allowing us to oh, connect with higher states of consciousness. Our mission is to guide and elevate this Christ seed within us, moving it upward until it is symbolically crucified at the center of the head. The Bible rich in symbolism and allegory can be understood as a profound guide to this internal journey, rather than just a historical account at its essence, it illustrates the process of spiritual transformation symbolized by the birth-death-resurrection and rebirth of Christ. This narrative isn't solely about a historical figure, but represents the potential for inner trans, formation that resides within each of us awakening the Christ. Within leads to profound changes on both a physiological and spiritual level, guiding one toward enlightenment and self-realization. When the sacred oil reaches the optic thalamus, it triggers the creation of new rejuvenating blood within the body. Without this process, old and toxic blood continues to circulate within our systems. For true healing to occur, the oil must ascend to the optic thalamus, which reactivates dormant brain cells and initiates a form of spiritual resurrection akin to the return of the prodigal son to the heavens of the cerebrum. This journey not only facilitates physical regeneration, but also brings about a profound spiritual renewal, opening the door to higher consciousness and clairvoyant abilities. The knowledge we share here is incredibly powerful, but its true value lies in its practical application. It shouldn't remain a mere concept or theory. It needs to be practiced consistently over time to reveal its full potential to truly experience the benefits of this ancient wisdom. Commit to trying it for a full year. The process is relati. Very simple each month observe the phase of the moon when it aligns with the zodiac sign that was present at the exact time of your birth. During this lunar phase, a remarkable oil is secreted by the brain and begins its descent through the spinal cord to the base. To elevate this oil again, you must consciously raise your vibrational frequency and retain your seed, which is your life force. This sacred fluid nourishes every system in your body, maintaining vitality and promoting longevity. Premature release of this fluid can deplete your energy and diminish your well-being by retaining it. You preserve your essential energy and support your overall health and longevity. Start this practice at the precise time of your birth and count forward 72 hours or three full days. During this time, it is crucial to avoid sexual activity, particularly ejaculation, as this can deplete the vital energy needed for the process. Focus on meditation. Consume living fresh foods and avoid red meat and processed items. Aim for a diet rich in vegetables and natural juices, free from artificial additives and contaminants that might e. lower your energy throughout these three days. Maintain a state of calm and positivity, engaging in meditation as much as possible. If regular meditation isn't feasible, focus on keeping your thoughts peaceful and centered. Pay close attention to your dreams during this period, as they may provide insights and guidance. After these 72 hours, the central region of the brain will begin to illuminate, activating the pineal gland. And remember, this entire process unfolds over a year, with each month presenting an opportunity for the seed within you to grow recharge and AC, accumulate more energy, according to ancient teachings after. A year of committed practice, you may experience a profound spiritual awakening often referred to as christening. This awakening is a deeply personal experience, one that becomes your, your own truth, independent of any external validation. Thank you for watching. If you found this content valuable, please like, subscribe, and share.